Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. How are you doing, man? I'm all right. What's up, man? My team didn't lose in the NHL playoffs today. Okay, whatever. We're not talking about that tonight at all. Yeah, because uh, they're, they're already. Oh, well, we are. Also, we are also being joined by Chris, aka CGM. How are you doing? I'm better if uh, my team could play like they're actually the defending champions. But well, I mean, they're only defending champion for what? Until at least Monday. We went over this yeah. last week. You're only defending <laughs> champion for one. But we didn't get swept out by a team that didn't make the playoff. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, man, we got <clears throat> we got quite a few things to talk about. Uh, obviously, it's no uh, it's no secret. It shouldn't fall on deaf ears. Where we are in the midst of the NFL, or rather the NHL playoffs. I wish it was the NFL playoffs. Uh, the NHL playoffs, and um, things are getting a bit heated, to say the least. And you know, Chris, being a big Capitals fan, he is. You know, uh, he's never a happy camper anytime his team is down on the scoreboard, especially if they lose a game. Um, but speaking of losing games and scoreboards, uh, Chris, I know you're a Redskins fan. Sarge, I know you're a Steelers fan. As you guys may already know, I'm a Ravens fan. Uh, today, uh, March, or rather April the 18th, uh, the NFL actually ske- uh, released the official schedule for the entire year. Um what what do you guys uh what do you guys think well, of the by schedule? week three the Redskins will be season will be shot to hell because they're gonna lose in Philly, Dallas will come in and kick our ass, and then we'll lose on Monday night football because we could never win a primetime game. Oh and three. Save yourself some time the last thirteen games. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh certainly with that kind of attitude, I don't see how you'd win any games. Um but overall, are you pretty much satisfied with the schedule? I know that the Jets, Giants, uh, Patriots, um, Bengals, I think they all tied for like the second easiest schedule. Now I know oh, man. I know some of those rankings are based off of like previous years and every year is a new year, but what do you guys think about that? The Steelers get to open their season off against the Patriots. Again. Again. Wasn't that the, the case in 2015? Yeah, we've played the Patriots every year. But I specifically oh, remember God. like 2015 being like a week one game against the Patriots where Gronk had like three yeah, it, <laughs> three touchdowns. It wasn't that bad, I don't think. I think I'm pretty sure we it came down to a field goal, and we had Josh Scobie, and he was. Playing like Josh Scobie. Poor Josh Scobie. Scobie Doby Do. There's a reason that guy's not in the league anymore. I'm actually surprised looking at the Ravens schedule. Uh we are only given three primetime games and uh two late afternoon games. Uh I, I expect a little bit more to be honest with you. You know, they, they They're a mediocre seven and nine, nine and seven team. They're not gonna put them on prime time. <laughs> Sarge, you laugh, but I, I'm i kind of inclined to agree with him a little bit. You, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of inclined to agree with Chris a little bit here. I think we're going to be finished somewhere close to 500. Uh, maybe a little bit above, I don't know about under, but we might be a little bit above 500 this year. Um, I can see I can see probably eight, eight or nine games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any games you're looking at possibly going to this year, or are you not attending any games? Well, you know what? Um, Before we get into that, I got to say the one thing I'm very thankful for is that Thanksgiving can't be ruined on Thanksgiving this year. The Redskins can't ruin it because they're not playing. <laughs> you, you know, Chris, sometimes you you remind me of the tin foil hat so much. Like any other fan <laughs> would be so happy to have their team play on Thanksgiving, except for you. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been a fan of a team that's been abysmal for 25 years. Hey, listen, man, uh, I get he's it. Been but... a fan of the Ravens, almost as bad. Dude, we've had some really rough years, but I will say <laughs> this: it's change is good, dude. I shouldn't have to. What watch. have we changed? Tell me what we've changed. We have I'm the not same sa- coach. We have listen, the same I'm not saying the Redskins. 
I'm not saying the Redskins. I'm saying overall as a viewer, as someone who watches football throughout the season, watches different teams play, especially Thanksgiving, where you get three really, really good games usually. It's nice to see some change. Because, you know, one of those three games, without fail, is going to be Lions and Cowboys. You know, so it's it's nice well, to see they them. They throw- each play at home, so it's not the two of them playing. They each play a home game every year. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I, I know the two of those guys are going to be playing on Sunday for sure. But it's nice to have some change. So, yeah, you know what? Throw the Redskins in there. Uh, back in 2011, I remember they threw the Ravens in there on Thanksgiving. And then also 2013 as well. Um, it's really good to see. Um, yeah. Are you uh, are you guys planning on attending any games this year? I'm not paying Snyder my money to watch him run our team into the ground with this clown president that's his – he won't fire when he fires Bruce Allen. Maybe I'll go to a game. How many games does Snyder play in a year, just on average? Exactly, he doesn't play. So why are you getting involved in the politics of things? <laughs> because we have don't a get yourself president. Let the basic things stay. The basic things. We have things. a president who's ranked thirty second in the NFL as the executive. He's ranked as the least trusted executive. Every fan wants him fired, and we give him more responsibilities. That's why I'm pissed off. Well. Okay. Well, then I will go ahead and ask the same question to Sarge because he's mature enough to answer it. <laughs> Do you have any games or a game that you are interested in going to this year? Interested in going in, going to, and able to go to are two different things. I yeah. Have three two year olds. I don't have the extra money to throw around to go to a football game. I hear you. I hear you. I'm kind of in the same boat, obviously, without the kids, though. Uh, but there is one game I was actually kind of eyeing before the NFL schedule came out, which was going to be the Ravens at Rams. Um, being in the West Coast here in Vegas, there's anytime the schedule comes out now, like I, I look at the away games, it's sad. I mean, I'd like to go to Baltimore and watch a game. There's no feeling quite like being at the stadium where the good guys are playing. But, you know. Some good guys. Yeah, yeah, the good guys, the home team. But uh, being where I'm at now, it's like, oh, man. All right, so I have to wait for the schedule release to see, you know, who our away opponents are. Unfortunately for me, or fortunately, the two closest teams that we play at this year are going to be the L.A. Rams or the uh, the Seattle Seahawks. And I definitely don't want to go to Seattle because uh, I hear it's crazy up there. So, I figured, you know what, let's try the L.A. Rams. It's going to be a Monday night football game. Um, if I can get it for a good price, I think they're going for like three to $400 for decent seats. That's another thing, too. If I'm going to go and see a game, I'm going to be sitting the 100 level. Because if, if, if I can see players and, and details and stuff better watching from home, what's the point of going to the stadium? So... Yeah, I always thought the same thing, but going to the games is a lot. It is a lot of fun. The The atmosphere, you know, the uh, camaraderie amongst the other fellow fans, I get it. But uh, you're you're you also missing out on... Well, <laughs> f- you know, you can say what you want, but I, I per- happen to like FedEx Field. I, I like uh, uh, Coliseum. Dumb... I like Coliseum-type stadiums like that. It's part of the reason why I like the uh, current Rams stadium. They pat you down when you're coming in, and it, and it's not if you have a gun or anything. It's because they don't want you to bring in food. The parking lot <laughs> is in a field. <laughs> Why do I and feel like Chris will stop for it, having a cheeseburger in his pocket? Cursing and fighting because the Redskins lose every time. I don't know. I think it's a lot more than just food, to be honest with you. I was at a Golden Knights game uh, last year during the playoffs, and... Uh, they pat you down, and the only way you're actually able to bring uh, food and other items like that, they don't take food away. That's a common misnomer. But if you have a clear bag, I think the NFL also instituted the clear bag policy. But if you have a clear bag with you, uh, if they security can readily see what the contents of your bag are, most likely they'll let you in with whatever it is, except if it's alcohol. So, like, you could stop at Subway? Yeah, you can stop at Subway. I think... Uh, uh, one of the guys we went with, because uh, we did like a kind of like a group outing, 
and they, they were group playoff tickets. I think they got like sliders. I don't know where they got burger sliders from, but uh, they were definitely munching on them during the game. So, uh, yeah, I know for a fact you can bring food in sometimes with the even with the clear bag policy, but. Not a FedEx Field. Snyder would lose a couple bucks, but <laughs> so <laughs> it always goes back to Snyder. Now the Nationals let you bring in water, food, all sorts of stuff. I that's because nobody cares about the Nationals, though. Wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like Chris, I know you love <laughs> baseball, but it is so difficult to stay awake while watching baseball. <laughs> It's We've different if you go to the games, though. I have fun at the games. I can't it. I can't watch it on TV, though. You're too inept to understand the nuances of the Here game. Here we go. So you're bored Here with it. So. so everyone knows who Gordon Ramsay is. Uh, he came uh, to California, and he was treated to a baseball game. I don't know what, who he was watching. What's the L.A. team? The, the Dodgers. Dodgers. So he was at that game, didn't make it a full inning. He left. And uh, I guess at the same time, there was a Laker game going on. So he actually went to the Laker game. He ditched the baseball game for uh, the basketball game, which is understandable. And afterwards, he was asked why he did it. And he flat out said it. He said it was a slow-moving sport and nothing was happening. I can't disagree with him. I can't disagree with him. You know? So. So before we go ragging on baseball too much and get off the football subject, how about of your first six games, how many of them do you think the Ravens will win? All right, so let me pull that up real quick. And do the same thing with Chris, and I'll answer mine. But... Okay. Well, so Probably one. I don't even have to look, but I will. So once again, the Ravens open off the season uh, on the road uh, against the Dolphins. Uh, so going in order here for the first six games, you said uh, three of those six are actually um, interdivision rivalry games. But week one is the Dolphins. Next is the Cardinals, Chiefs, Browns, Steelers, and Bengals. Um, so one. I don't know. I, I, this is something that this Ravens team of this year is a team that we don't know anything about. Um, it's your first six regular season games. That's our first, uh, let me see. That's our first I'm not six. about preseason. I'm not talking about preseason either. Those are first six regular season games. Because the Steelers don't play the Ravens till week seven. Um, I'm looking at it right now, bro. <laughs> week, October 6th, 1 p.m. October 6th. In huh? Pittsburgh. Let me, let me pull up the schedule. I wish I had this uh, available in advance, but give me one second. Uh, so I'm showing week five is when we play you guys, uh, the Steelers. So uh, anyway, to answer your question, so I actually had it correct. Uh, starting at the Dolphins. Oh, then, wait, you're right, you're right, you're right. Was... Then the Cardinals, Chiefs, Browns, uh, Steelers, and Bengals. So what I was going to say is it's it, this is a kind of a tricky question to answer right because we don't know too much about this uh, 2019 Ravens team. Um, Lamar Jackson has not yet had a full season let alone a full off season to prepare and go through OTAs and develop chemistry with his players. Um, and also we're going to be coming through with a draft, which we know um, the fake news on the internet right now, ESPN NFL is pushing a narrative that uh, Baltimore is not a marketable spot for any receivers to go to because they know they won't get any action. But I don't think that could be further from the truth. Um I know they're working on th- developing Lamar Jackson. Uh, they, they're not going to take away his speed. Obviously, that's a weapon that doesn't really have any counters, so they're going to let him run uh, when uh, uh, pos- the uh, opportunity presents itself. But to answer your question, I have us winning at the Dolphins. I have us um, winning at the Cardinals, losing to the Chiefs. And then we have I have us splitting against the Browns, so... Um, Week four, we are hosting the Browns. I got us winning that game. Uh, week five, I, you know, and I'm not saying this to troll you, um, but I don't think the Steelers are going to be a very good team this year. I have us winning against the Steelers in week five, and finally against the Bengals, I have us losing, even though we host them at home. So uh, we're looking at uh, three and six uh, going through the first the first six weeks. Or sorry, three and three. Three and three. I feel like the Steelers are going to surprise some people this year. 
what makes you say that? What have I, they? I just, what have they done? I don't know. They got Dante Moncrief instead of the head case we did have. He's not an old downgrade. receiver. He's still pretty good. It's, it's a downgrade as far as I don't as know as far as athleticism goes, as far as having that that best wide receiver in the league. But you lose he, that locker room headache. He, you know, it I, makes a huge difference. I think he left his best talents in Indianapolis. Which, by the way, uh, you guys we'll play see. You know, nine. I, that's I never thought much matchup. of Andrew Luck either. So yeah, well, that's going to be an interesting matchup. It's definitely going to be a game to watch. Uh, your Week Nine game against the Colts. It's going to be a homecoming game for him. So I see the Steelers possibly winning week one against the Patriots because the Patriots typically have a slow burn. They play worse in the beginning of the season than they do towards the end of it. Yeah. Um, then we play the Seahawks in Pittsburgh. I see them winning. I see the Steelers winning that one because the Seahawks have. Wait, 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 wait. You have the Steelers winning that game? You do realize yep. Russell Wilson is now the highest paid NFL player. I also realize I don't care. <laughs> okay. All right. Continue. Russell Wilson hasn't impressed me in years. So, well, I mean, numbers don't lie, man. He's the highest paid NFL player. Uh, what is it? Yeah, Antonio Brown's million? the highest paid wide receiver in the league, and he he was the highest paid wide receiver in the league. I don't know what he's making now over, you know, the Raiders. But, um, he was the highest paid wide receiver in the league, and he never won a Super Bowl. Yeah. So that's week two. Okay. Um, I got him winning against the 49ers because of the 49ers. I still think they're better than the Bengals, so they'll win week four. I don't know if they can beat the Ravens' defense, but that defense has been shredded pretty good. In Baltimore, right? No, that's that's in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. They they should be able to beat them in Pittsburgh. I don't see them beating them in Baltimore, though. Which, by the way, why why would the NFL put that game at a one o'clock start time, late afternoon or prime time at best? And then there's Steelers and Chargers. Oh boy, oh, the Chargers will win. I'm hoping the Steelers can win that one, but I'm not super confident about it. So I think the Steel I think their first six games, the Steelers will win. Four out of the six, and have a toss up with the with the with the Ravens. So possibly two and four, four and two. I think they'll be four and two at the end of six. Four and two. Uh, we we could probably go through the same scenario with Chris, but knowing him, he's yeah. probably going to say it's zero oh and six, right? You're not going to no, win gonna, any games. I'm going to give Chris his chance. That was the idea. But he gets a chance to explain. Well, let's himself. see. At Philadelphia, we're zero oh and one. <laughs> Here we go. Home against Dallas, 0-2. The Bears on Monday night is a toss-up, but the Bears are better, 0-3. Giants. <laughs> you should beat the that's Giants. In, that's in New York, though, and they creamed us at home last year, but I'll, we should beat them. They don't have Beckham anymore, so they lost that. Yeah. They don't have an offensive so, line, and they're – Best players so, are running back. One in one in three. Then New England comes to Washington, one and four. And God help me if we lose to the Dolphins. So, so you get a pretty four. bleak outlook. Oh, and it doesn't get any easier to have the Niners, Viking, Bills. So maybe one out of that. So that's two and three and six when we get into the bye. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Although we, could, we, we should could... beat the Niners and the Bills. And that's the thing about the NFL. It's, we, we hear the cliche, it's any given Sunday. We could sit here and break down these matchups all day long on paper, but until they're played on a Sunday, it's really hard to say. And, and you know what? The NFL draft hasn't even happened. I mean, the the facade and image of these teams can change quite a bit during an offseason, especially if they acquire um, any kind of Hollywood-type uh, uh, acquisition in the draft. So, uh, speaking of the draft, are you guys planning on doing anything special for that? I was uh, I was thinking about possibly at, heading out. I'll be at work. You'll Start be at work on the draft? Start, yeah. It's on a Thursday. Starts on a Thursday. What about you, Chris? 
No, I'll just watch it at home. Where am I going to Where are you going to go? Um, well, here's the thing. I wasn't going to watch the whole draft. Um, usually with the draft, I watch the first two rounds. Uh, usually, what is it? The first round, they give them 10 minutes per pick. Second round, is it five? Some ridiculous amount. Yeah, it, it, it progressively gets lower. But I think, I think I usually watch the first three or four rounds, and then I'm done. Yeah, so um, so probably gonna watch the first couple rounds. Uh, probably head out to the casino. I know that's uh, they're doing a lot of uh, every major casino on the strip here in Vegas is doing a uh, draft watch party. Um, but I have a because I don't watch college football, and I'm gonna try to get into it this year. Um, I really don't know who any of these players are that we're drafting. So um, the the mo for the for the longest time for me is I wait till my t- team drafts the player and then I look him up, uh, look up his stats and also look up his highlights uh, to see how, how he's played in high school or at college, all that kind of thing. Um, the kind of awards, meritorious awards he's received throughout the years, um, any kind of achievements like that. So I definitely think it's a shallow approach though to uh, seeing what new talent comes to your team. So this year I'm definitely be watching college football. Um, Sarge, do you watch college football? Every once in a while. I mean, I like to watch Marshall games because that was a school that I had my scholarship to that I pissed away, literally. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. And Marshall games are almost never on TV. Yeah. What about you, Chris? You uh, you said you're not really going to watch, right? No, I'm a tech fan. So okay. So, but what do you normally what do you normally do when you get that ESPN alert that like like your Redskins drafted a certain player? Shake my head because it's usually a bad pick. Like I know a few years ago we drafted like a kicker. I don't know anyone who's got a more grim outlook towards life <laughs> than you. <laughs> the draft is literally how your team gets better. And you're sitting there shaking. And your we head. have bad draft after bad draft after bad draft. You don't know that, man. You don't know that. Yeah, there's some so, bad picks. Believe me, I'm a Ravens fan. I've seen Matt Elam's. I've seen Brashad Perriman's. Okay. Two years ago, we took two or three years ago, we took Josh Doxon with our first round pick. Look, nobody beats out the Jets for bad drafting. This is true, but Chris, you are proving my point. There's always going to be bad draft picks. There's guys who don't make it in the NFL. They make it on the college level, but they don't make it on the NFL level. But then there's also studs like Ezekiel Elliott, you know, like uh, the running back from the Giants. Uh, you got uh, all kinds of new talent, you know, top top tier talent. I'm not saying that every first round pick is going to be a, a legend, instant legend, but um, you know, look for no further than you know Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, you know. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm just saying or, the draft. Or uh, Johnny Manziel. Or Money Manziel. He had a short, illustrious career in the AAF, which no longer exists. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying, you can't have a grim outlook towards the NFL draft. You might not care for it. You might not know who the players are all the time, but it is the the number one way your team gets better instantly overnight. Usually. As a general rule of thumb. So... I always wondered, though, with the NFL draft, how the first round takes 10 minutes, right? Do you uh-huh. think Do you yeah, think so. it actually takes the team 10 minutes to get their picks in to kind of like bargain, to trade up or trade down? Or do you think it's something network controlled, whereas where the network wants to play highlights and clips of the, pers- uh, the, the uh, potential draftees? What do you think? Probably both. Probably a mix of both. Both? Yeah, probably both. Um, it's hard. To, it's hard to tell how good a team's going to be until after the draft, anyway. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I mean, like, like if, I said, if the Steelers don't pick up a new corner or a new safety, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, that defense is in desperate need of one. Um, and you need a middle linebacker too, though. So, yeah, I mean, defense could definitely use some help for sure. But 
you know, like I said, it's it's exciting to see how how teams go after their uh, the needs. Every team has has needs going into the off season. Uh, there's no perfect team that's got every position stacked. Uh, and if they do, they were probably trashed the year before because they have all kinds of money to play with. But um, yeah. it's just fun. To me, it's fun to see the team improve. And it, like you said, it doesn't always pan out. You can draft a first-round draft pick and be like, all right, we're going to kill it this year. But that's, again, that's on paper. That's prior through going through any OTAs, any kind of mini camp, any kind of preseason. We don't know. Really, the only time you know is the first week of September. That's when it's football that matters. Yep. That's when stats matter, all that kind of stuff matters. So uh, until then, we can continue to speculate and be like, oh, you know, uh, the team's going to be trashed this year. Uh, heck, the Giants were given the second – they were tied with like five or six other teams, like I mentioned earlier, for having the second easiest schedule this year. Giants have a potential to, to woo us this year and uh, potentially make playoffs. But again, we're just speculating. Or they could go back to winning two happen. games only. Who knows? I, I really don't see the Giants doing much of anything. I don't get the direction they're going in. I don't understand it either. Their biggest problem was that offensive line. And the fact that they had a head case for a wide receiver <clears throat> sounds <clears throat> familiar. Well, he's no longer their problem anymore. <laughs> now he's our problem. We have to play him twice a year. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's also on the Browns, and the Browns are historically bad for screwing up good things. I'm not going to say anything because we lost to him last year. We tied him last year. Yeah, that was sad. Week that, that's one. That's worse. Week Tying one. the Browns is like kissing your sister. And for you to start off your season last year with that, so bad. Yeah, so bad. It was, it was quite disappointing. That's the thing, man. I, I think what dictates a lot of these teams' success is how how strong you start off. You mentioned that the uh, – what was the term you used for the Patriots with their slow start? They have a, they have a slow burn. Like they, they have a they slow burn. Out, they start out slow, and they pick up throughout, this, throughout the season. Yeah, and I feel like the, the – if you the play case. them late, you're in trouble. If you play them early, you got a good shot. I mean, look at the Jaguars. The Jaguars murdered them in the first game of the last year. Yeah. And, and then, I feel like what's funny is the, the contrast between, like, the really good teams, like, we we all assume the Patriots are, but, like, the contrast between the good teams and the bad teams, because the bad teams will also start off um, – They'll some of them, actually, surprisingly, they'll start off the season really hot. And it's a fast burn to nothingness almost immediately, yeah. three or four games into the season. Uh, who was it a couple of years ago uh, that that won like five games straight? Was it Atlanta? I think it was Atlanta who went 5-0. and oh, and We thought they were going to be a real deal, and they went ahead and lost the remaining of their, remainder of their schedule pretty much. So, yeah, it's, it's not about how you start. The Patriots proved that year in and year out. It's definitely not how, how you start. Because if it was, they wouldn't be in good shape. But that's a team destined for playoffs every year. Belichick knows what he's doing. If I were well, you, I mean, I'd be also, scared to play week the, one. one of the, he's in the easiest division in the AFC. Yeah. I mean, anytime you get... One of the easiest divisions in football. I agree. Anytime you get the chance to get six gimme games, let's be real. The Bills, you play them twice a year. The Jets, Miami might give you a run. Actually, Miami does give them a run. Uh, one yeah, of those two games. Fun. So you're looking at five or six gimme games a year. Yeah. You know. But I mean, it's, it's somebody posted on Twitter that something about, uh, well, it was something to do with Bell and how they're going to clinch the playoffs. I was like, hey, you're going to clinch it for the, uh, <laughs> for the Patriots. That squared away for them, are you? Yeah. Is, I mean, they, they're the only. I have to say it all the time. They're the only team in the NFL with a guaranteed playoff spot every year. Pretty much. Who? I mean, who else are they going to contend with, <laughs> you know, in that division? It's just – it's ridiculous, and there's no parity in that division. No, right no, none at all. Not at all. The, the Patriots definitely take it, and it's not even close. You know, Dolphins, At one point a long time ago, they were good. I will say, though, uh, once – if and when, well, not not if, but when 
uh, Brady and uh, if Belichick still chooses to uh, lead the team, I do see the incumbent in that uh, division being the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to go ahead and put that out there because I've seen how the team plays the Patriots every year. Uh, it's, it's not always a gimme game. The, the Dolphins usually give the Patriots a good run for their money. And I can see them uh, taking over in that division once the Patriots are done. Well, I can agree with that. The, the Dolphins, they're one of those unpredictable teams where when they're good, they're really good. But they're only really good for like two games and then they fall off real quick. <laughs> yeah. Like they're, um, they're the team that had Dan Marino and couldn't win a Super Bowl. Oh, you have to bring that up. Leave Dan alone. <laughs> Leave Dan alone. He, he didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> You had a Hall of Fame quarterback. The only Hall of Fame... Well, I mean, he's not the only Hall of Fame quarterback to never win a Super there's Bowl. A, there's a few players you can say that about, though. Like Steve McNair. You know? I mean, I think Antonio Brown's going to be a Hall of Fame wide receiver, but he's never going to win a Super Bowl because he's too he's too self-centered and in his own head to let anybody else succeed. He has to be number one. He has to get all the touches. If he doesn't, he's not happy. He's a crybaby, and he'll leak your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> he'll yeah. leak your DMs to make you look bad, but they're DMs that make him look bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't ever ask <laughs> Antonio Brown for help because he'll leak the, the DMs and make him look like a, a douche. So, but yeah, and I'm, I'm it's overall. Point, it doesn't take much. I'm overall just looking forward to the NFL season. I know it's something crazy like. 80 days until the NFL season starts, or actually it's even more than that, but um, having the draft so soon is a nice, gentle reminder from life that uh, we're not as far from the NFL action as we uh, might think. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm not. <laughs> we know, Chris. <laughs> we know. Chris, like I said, there's not very many things I think that, uh, that you look forward to in life or that you have a positive outlook on. You're just... Uh, a, a negative Nancy, a, a Debbie Downer, wrong. you know. How am I wrong? Wrong. You literally hate anything that has a heartbeat. <laughs> no. I don't hate puppies. <laughs> you never know. We never. He never talks about them. Not true. <laughs> I just wrong. hate failure. That's what I hate. I hate failure. Well, well, why are you a, why are you a fan of teams that fail consistently? I that's who I've always been a fan of for my thirty two years on Earth, and I don't. I will see say at this point, Sarge. As much as we criticize Chris, I do respect him for that. Oh yeah, for and, and that goes for everybody. If you're a Giants fan today, if you're listening to this, I respect you. Just just know that. You know, you you put up. They with... won two Super Bowls. <laughs> Listen, give me a break. Listen, <laughs> I they've earned my respect because of the bad year they That's had last fun. year. You've earned my respect too for remaining a, a fan despite the the circumstances. You know, it takes a strong person to support a team when they're bad. You know, I, I, trust me, I know. <laughs> I trust me, I know. I, I've seen some really bad Ravens teams like. Teams led by Anthony Wright and uh, Kyle Bowler and, oh, my goodness, Trent Dilfer. You know, and let's be real. Trent Dilfer wasn't the reason that they won the first Super Bowl. It was that defense. It, he'll even come out and say that he's one of the worst quarterbacks ever to play the game. So, respect to you. If you got a bad team last year and you're still supporting them, I got a lot of respect for you. Cordell Stewart. That's all I got to say. Cordell oh, my goodness. Stewart. What about Thad Lewis? Yeah. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy oh, Maddox. Man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So um no, I'm just overall really looking forward to the NFL. You didn't have Danny Warfel as your starting quarterback. <laughs> no, listen, when when I was in when I was in like grade school, you were a fan of one of three teams. You were a San Francisco fan, you were a Cowboys fan, or, or you Steelers were a Redskins fan. fan. No, you were. I didn't, there weren't any Steelers fans in my, my when I was a kid, except for my granddad hated them. Hated the hated the Steelers. I don't know. I, I, that, that's part of the reason I started becoming a Steelers fan was because my grandfather hated the Steelers. 
I, don't I, know. I wanted I, I wanted to root against my I wanted to root against them instead of rooting with them. I will tell you from my experience, there are Steelers fans everywhere. Like you'd be oh, yeah. out, you'd be out on a Las Vegas strip like I was tonight. By the way, uh, I was out on the strip tonight and I rushed home uh, to do this podcast with these two gentlemen because and I was like, watching I was watching a yeah. Golden Knights game and because uh, you. You couldn't have the foresight to, to, to think, I have to be online at this time, to, and I have to go out. Instead, I'm going to go outside. I was outside three minutes late to the podcast. The game game. Let me finish. I was three minutes late to the podcast. Anyway, I'm out on the strip watching the uh, the uh, Vegas Golden Knights game, even though we lost. And um, <laughs> there's, there's Steelers fans <laughs> out there. You know, I've seen uh, quite a few Steelers jerseys, not only tonight, but just – Throughout throughout my course of my day, like you'll see a Juju Smith Schuster or a Jerome Bettis jersey every now and again. It's like you guys got Steelers fans everywhere, you know. Oh yeah. And these are old folks. Some some of them are old folks that have these jerseys on. It's not the the newer generation. So you know, it's uh, there's a lot of history behind that team, and uh, their fans travel well. I've always wondered. When I see a Steelers game and it's a road game, and I look at the fans in the stadium, like how there's so much yellow and black, it's like where are these guys coming from? They're like right. cockroaches; they're everywhere. But now I understand. You know, yeah, Pittsburgh teams in general are pretty well traveled. I mean, you look at like Penguins away games; they're black and yellow jerseys everywhere. Yeah, yeah, true. But uh, I, I, just overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the NFL schedule. I'm quite happy that the NFL decided not to give the Ravens any kind of inter- international games this year because uh, the Ravens don't play well when they're out of America. But um, I think I think those international games are just kind of a waste. No, it's a, it's a nice PR business move by the NFL to try to That's reel in more ball. fans. You're, they, Unless they're going to make an international football league. It's a strategic move, okay? It's Don't get this confused. It's a business move. They're going into areas where the number one sport of popularity is soccer, okay? So they're trying to draw from that crowd and build their own um, viewer base. So they're not dumb. There's a reason why they're not going to Zimbabwe or Taiwan or something, you know? They're going to these places where they've got a lot of people who watch who watch sports, they watch soccer, and they spend a lot of money doing it. So, that's exactly why they're doing it, in my opinion. I think it's nothing more than a business move. They don't care about getting other cultures involved. They don't care about unity. They don't care about, uh, you know, we're all one nation. No. (laughs) No. We want your money. That's all it is. We don't care about you. We want your bills. Exactly. So... Anyway, um, that's about all we have for this week uh, of Two and a Half Cents Podcast. Hard to believe we are already... Uh, is this episode four or five? It's four, right? Four. Four. Yeah. Man, four weeks into the podcast. I'm enjoying it, and um, I hope to keep it going. If you guys like yeah, it... Yeah, as long as, as long as you show up on time. I was three minutes late. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. You're late? It's unacceptable, sir. We have to show late. up... Unacceptable. If... if if you guys only knew how much complaining Chris does before every podcast, it's well more than three minutes. So I kind of deserve that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's podcast. If you liked it, drop a like. The links to all uh, all our channels and or Twitters are going to be down in the description. Uh, please go ahead and follow. I've also instructed Sarge and Chris, if they're so inclined to do so, they're welcome to set up a uh, Spotify, a uh itunes or whatever it is you guys want uh different media forums uh, for this podcast so if you're interested hit them up because i don't know how to do it Uh, if you're interested you should hit hit raven up to try to see what you need to do to to order a shirt because that's where the money's coming from dude yes yes the shirts so um sergeant kicker's wife made some awesome shirts i'm gonna wear it on my next live stream i think um but they, they look really good and uh, if they go on sale, are they going on sale soon or no? Um, I think we're going to get a couple more out there because I got another one I'm having her make for me. Okay. Um, that way there'll be three different shirts to choose from. Okay. Uh, each well, one's going to be 
each one's gonna be a different price because they use a different different amounts of material yeah that's understandable um the money for that is going towards the material to make the shirts my wife's time and anything left over after that goes towards a hosting site for the podcast there you go there you have it. And once that yep. site is available where you can buy those shirts, we'll also throw that in the description. As of right now, there isn't one, but uh, maybe for next week. We'll see. Um, so appreciate you guys for coming through and listening. We hope to catch you on next, next week's podcast. Till next time, this is Sarge, Chris, and Double R checking out. See you next time. Go Hurricanes! <laughs> hurricanes can kiss my ass. <laughs> We know they can. Oh, man, I hope they beat the Cavs.